fix, but go ahead. It's like the first Whenever time I get to do this group interview without being like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shannon, um, you had a very good season last year. Maybe a little disappointed in, in how you finished the Olympics. You mm -hmm. ran well, but you bounced back so well from that. Mm -hmm. What was the key maybe to, to being able to put the disappointment of not mailing behind mm -hmm. you and, and to go back and do, do what you did? Yeah, uh, 2016 was definitely the best year I've ever had in my career. And so, you know, it's it's tough that at the Olympics it's top three or bust. So, you know, to come in fourth at the Olympics is something that now that I've had some distance and perspective, I am I'm very proud of. But it was really tough um, to kind of, you know, come out of out of Rio so disappointed. Um, and uh, I think, you know, I've always been someone who prides themselves on uh, their ability to bounce back, um, you know, that I've always felt that challenges make me stronger and I've come out better than better afterwards. So, um, you know, after Rio, it was a combination of the support of the people around me to kind of pick me back up and um, the determination on my own end to, to finish the season strong and to um, use my fitness to really try to do some, some more exciting and great things. Does it help that it's a world championship year this year? You know, you mm -hmm. have something big to refocus on mm -hmm. immediately and be like, okay, now let's turn all my attention to Yeah, for to sure. Others. I think it was, it's, I, every Olympics I have this, what I call it the um, Olympic hangover. <laughs> it takes a while to just kind of like reset, regroup, um, find new goals that are as meaningful um, and to kind of like, you know, there's certain aspects of the Olympics that are just, not replicated anywhere else so the the energy and the excitement of the stadium 90,000 people plus you know so many through the television watching what you're doing the spotlight can be a bit intense but it's also um, really thrilling and um, you know so to kind of come out of that whole Olympics with this big goal I've been working at for four years um, and to it took me a bit <laughs> to just kind of through the fall and even through the indoors a bit to kind of like okay, what am I striving for now? You know, resetting my goals, but I'm really excited um, that the world champs are in London um, and even the US champs, I'm sad they're not here, but at least they're in Sacramento, which is close. I'm from San Francisco, so that's a great place as well. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, having this opportunity, I re-signed with Nike and, you know, have um, more years ahead of me to just try to do, um, you know, I finished 2016 so strong, it, it made me feel that I still have more to achieve. Um, and so I'm excited by those goals too. So is it gonna be for nationals 1,500 or 5,000 or have you decided? To I haven't decided. I was trying to find a way to do both. Um, and I tried to kind of um, talk about or petition for the schedule to be conducive towards a double, but um, that didn't happen. So I'm not sure what the decision will be, but that's something that we're kind of, you know, luckily I have qualifying times in both and, um, um, you know, I have, I can let the next month or month and a half of racing kind of help me determine um, what to do. Do you have a preference between the two distances? Do you like one over the other? I mean, I love the 15 because it's so familiar for me. Um, I've been racing it since, uh, you know, since high school um, on the track and, you um, but the 5K is a new and exciting challenge, which, you know, after 10 years as a pro, the idea of, I'm, I'm grateful to have um, the opportunity to be in the position where I can move up in distance. And, um, you know, for me, I think kind of back to Ken's question about after the Olympics, this idea of new challenges is something that really excites me and motivates me. So, um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what this, uh, particular outdoor season will hold but I I know that they'll I know there'll be more 5k's in my future so <laughs> you've uh I think you've been working with Pete Julian quite a bit always but it, it sort of formalized it said that you know he's your primary coach mm -hmm. now what do you like about working with him I think that it's great on the Oregon project Alberto and Pete are such a good balance for each other um Pete is very much like my high school coach Andy Chan and my college coach Kevin Germain who are very kind of detail oriented um uh, 
uh, you know, make sure that we're covering all of our bases. Um, Alberto's a bit more of like the mad scientist, but both of them have such genius when it comes to coaching. So to have both of them working together to help make my training regimen is, I feel so grateful for that. Um, but yeah, so Pete, he's kind of, he's my guy I go to. Um, you know, what's my, what should my mileage be? What's the workout? When's, are we making sure that, because in middle distance, you have to touch on every aspect of, um, of training for whether it's top end speed all the way to longer intervals. And, um, it can be a complex thing to juggle. And, um, Pete's been very good at, you know, trying to make sure that we never get too far from any of those one important area or any, from any one important area. Shannon, did you say that, that you did petition to get the schedule changed or you I, thought about it? I did try to work with the chair of USA, of uh, distance and, um, uh, we tried to discuss different, and the, you know, they did um, talk with me and we all tried to work together. You know, of course I'm not the only one to please in this because you also have the 10K women that want to double. Um, and the challenge with Sacramento is that the ideal position for a 5K would have been to put it on the last day, but because it's a day meet then, they were concerned about heat. Um, so now the 15 and the first round and 10K, I think are the first day, the 5K is the next day, which is in the in between off day, and then the 15 final is the day after that. So it's really like not a great <laughs> setup for a middle distance uh, or for a 15 5K runner like myself, which is frustrating. But um, you know, I I I tried. <laughs> so can you talk about what it's been like through much of your career mm -hmm. to have Jenny Simpson as your prime U.S. rival? Yeah. I mean, you've had you know from the Worlds to the Olympics mm -hmm. to. You know, uh, uh, Diamond League meets, you're each, I think, throwing yourselves across lines yeah. to win races. Yeah. What has it been like to have her as a, as a chief competitor? Yeah, I think, I mean, throughout history of the history of our sport, there's always, you know, some of these great rivalries, have, but have been what I think really brought out the best in the athletes. And it also, um, from a fan's perspective, helps them, for, whether it's, promoting as we heard in there you know it helps meet promoters to promote the competition it helps uh, <laughs> it helps um fans really you know they either love me or they hate me or they love her or they hate her you know they're rooting for one or the other or whatever it might be um so it tells a story um i think that you know for me at the end of the day it's about how do I get myself to be the best athlete possible? And when I was in Rio, I wasn't competing against Jenny. I was competing against all of the women in the final. So, um, and that's how it is in, in every race. Um, so, you know, in terms of how it, how it affects my daily life or my daily training, it's, it's a, a non, it's a non issue, but, um, within the sport itself, I'm, I'm glad that it can be a, um, uh, a rallying point or, you know, <laughs> something to kind of, uh, help help uh help promote what we well, do you, you each help each other i'm sure mm -hmm. yeah you know i believe that um i uh I, I i can't speak for her sentiments about it but i'm grateful to every woman that i compete against because you know there's a reason why we towed the line with other individuals to race um uh rather than just going out and doing time trials it, you know it's um I believe that competition brings the best out of me, um, and I've always found that I I raise to the level of the competition that surrounds me. So, you know, I'm grateful to every single woman who I've ever towed the line with for that reason. 